Welcome to this week's edition of the Wheels and Deals Community Spotlight, brought to you by Wheels and Deals of Pomeroy and the Meg's Independent Press. This is Carrie Rose, the Meg's Independent Press, and I'm here again with Wheels and Deals Community Spotlight, and I'm here to talk about something that is probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite, story of Meigs County. Uh, I'm with Cloris Gall again from Meigs County Historical Society, and we're here to talk about something that I can't believe I'm getting to hold in my hands. Yes. I love this. Most people do not get to do this. You don't get to touch this. And you probably go, what is it? It's just a stick. No, it's not just a stick. This is a walking cane. And this wasn't just anybody's walking cane. No. It was Samuel Wills Pomeroy, uh, for which the town of Pomeroy is named for. Tell us a little bit about him. Well, I'm going to read a little bit because I don't want to make a mistake mm -hmm. here. But he was born in 1764, and he passed away in 1841. Uh, he came to Pomeroy from Brighton, Massachusetts in 1836 to view, to view the 1,500 acres that he owned along the Ohio River. He called the community the Coal Bank because he lot, saw a lot of coal mm -hmm. when he was here, so he called it the Coal Bank. And he was, he's buried in the Beech Grove Cemetery. There, there's a huge monument up on the hill, mm -hmm. and uh, if you ever get a chance to go up there, it'd be nice to go up and just look at the monument that, that's up there. This is what the, the Charter Oak cane, and it belonged to Pom Mr. Pomeroy. He had it carved out of an oak tree that was in Connecticut, and we finally got it back in Meigs County in 1950. But the long story is, Mr. Pomeroy used to travel back and forth to England. And on one of his visits when he was over there, he met Charles Dickens, and they became quite good friends. And apparently, or folklore says that when Mr. Pomeroy was with Mr. Dickens one time in England, that he forgot his cane. <laughs> and somehow, uh, with Mr. Dickens' home and everything, they finally were cleaning out his home, and they found this cane, and they tried to find the home for it, or where it actually uh, belonged. So they contacted uh, A.V. Howe, who was the postmaster here in Pomeroy, and said that they had this cane. And uh, Mr. Howe made the point of telling them we would like to have the cane sent here. So it was, came into the Pomeroy Post Office, and Mr. Howe was a member of the uh, Historical Society at that time. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, so he brought the, coin, the cane to the Historical Society, and we have had it in our possession since 1950. We have kept it locked up or we only get it out for special occasions. And when the school children come in, we tell them this story that it was actually carved from the oak tree, the, Carter, the Charter Oak Tree in Massachusetts. And how the Charter Oak Tree got its name was uh, supposedly that the King of England wanted charters back from the colonies. And they duplicated their charter and hid the original in the uh, inside of that uh, rotten oak tree. Mm -hmm. So that's how it became the Charter Oak Tree. But I have a family in uh, Connecticut and up in that area, and uh, I was looking at some of the history on this, and they actually took some of the seeds from this uh, oak tree and put them uh, in a little park, and I believe it's in Boston. It's on the outskirts of Boston. So they are uh, seedlings from the Charter oak tree that this was carved from, um, and it was a massive, massive. It was oak a tree. massive tree. If you look on the end of the cane, which uh, you're not going to be able to see on there, but but it's actually on the end of this cane engraved in it. Yes, and what it is is uh, also the bicentennial quarter for Connecticut, and if you look at the bicentennial quarter, it has the big oak tree, and that is carved in the end of this cane. Mm -hmm. And it is inscribed around it, uh, and, and this is gold. It is gold. Um, and it is inscribed with his name in Pomeroy, Ohio, uh, 1869 on it. I believe. Yes, I think that's what that says. But it says that he cut it on the stick, it's engraved on the stick, uh, in 1819. So. It's, it's definitely old. 
uh, and it definitely is, the craftsmanship in it itself is amazing. Yes, it is. Uh, but the, the fact that this made its way back to Meigs County after being in England uh, in an attic <laughs> for, yes. for years, yes. uh, and the fact that, you know, everybody goes, well, it's all it's just a little old Pomeroy, it's just little Meigs County. That we, we used to really have a lot of people, and that we still do, have a lot of people that do a lot of things uh, that are a part of so many different things. I yes. mean, it, the, just because you come from here doesn't mean that you just come from the sticks or someplace that is, that narrative needs to change. And one of the ways to change that narrative is to talk about our history. I mean, this, he was a friend of Charles Dickens. Yes. And I don't know if you haven't heard of Charles Dickens, then then you need to go visit the Meigs County Library. <laughs> um, uh, and and I don't know how, what else to tell you because the, the, there are just so many different. I mean, just the idea of that uh, and the story behind this is just so amazing. But again, it's even if you were just looking at this. And I know that this camera is not going to do it justice. We're going to try to put some some pictures in here of it. And I don't even know if they'll do it justice because this is just, it's amazing. It's an amazing piece of art. It's beautiful. Uh, beautiful. It's, it's just gorgeous. And if you look at the oak leaves that are carved in here, mm -hmm. they started and they go round and round and they just continue. They just, yeah, they the just, oak leaves. Yes. and the, the writing on here is wrapped around it. Um, S. Wills mm -hmm. Pomeroy. Uh, yep, yeah, Pomeroy uh, cut, let me see where it is, Pomeroy in 1819 cut this stick from the Charter Oak and that's what it says all the way around it and it's uh, uh, just amazing. It's just, it's beautiful. Well he died in 1841 so that cane had to lay in the Dickens home in England for years. Mm hmm And I don't know if this was added, if this was added at some point, because this, this looks like it says 1869 at the top of it. And it may be, uh, it may, it's possible it's a, it's a replacement piece. Could be. But, but even from 1869. Yes. That's, <laughs> uh, I think that's what that says on there. Uh, but it's just amazing to me that we have it, and it's something, it's one of the treasures that the Meigs County Historical Society uh, takes care of and preserves uh, for future generations. And if you haven't been able to come down and look at it uh, at their location in Middleport, you need to make sure you check that out. Uh, don't always have it on display. No, we do not. It's no. a special, it's a special thing uh, that I know that it was on display during the Bicentennial. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there's different times that they that they will bring it out, but I, I'm really excited. I got to I got to hold it today. <laughs> um, but it is a, just an amazing piece of history, and it's an amazing work to preserve this kind of. Well, Mr. Pomeroy was so proud of this area. He said that the area here around Pomeroy was one of the healthiest areas in Ohio, and he sent letters to his son Charles and his other son, I'm not sure what his name is. Anyway, he sent, they want, he wanted them to come here to this Ohio Valley mm -hmm. and help him establish a community here and also to help him set up shipping on the Ohio River. So he was instrumental in bringing a lot of industry to this area too. And then, of course, Valentine B. Horton. Yes. And 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 you see the, the just the history go from there. But we also have uh, wonderful people like J James Edwin Campbell. Yes. Uh, we just rededicated his marker, put another yes. marker up. Tell us him. a little bit about him. James Edwin Campbell was born here in uh, up around the Beacon, mm -hmm. and uh, he was. Um, he, he passed away in, in, at 29 years of age, but he went on to, uh, to be the president of what is now 
the college in Charleston, I can't remember. West Virginia State? Yes, West Virginia State. He was the one that uh, was uh, uh, big in getting that, uh, getting that college started. He was the dean there. He went there and he went to uh, Chicago and was a writer out there. But he wrote several poems. And Shannon Scott, who's on our board, uh, is a great fan of, uh, of Mr. Campbell. And uh, he, uh, he has the stories on Mr. Campbell that he could tell, but he wrote some beautiful poetry. And, and it is amazing what he accomplished in those 29 years. Oh, yes. And, I'm not and doing I'm sure justice. that he, I'm sure that, oh, we're, we're going to talk about James Henry Campbell at another point, um, but, it, but it, it more in depth. But, but there are just amazing people out there that have done all kinds, just, just amazing things. And you never know. I mean, today you may be in a class next to somebody that may be, uh, that, that may be known in ways that you would never expect. And, you know, we're making history as, as we go. History's being made yes. every day. So there's a lot of amazing things that Meigs County has to offer, and it is, uh, and, and one of those things is a rich heritage. Yes, we do have. It's, I'm not from Ohio. I was born in West Virginia, but it's only Ohio River separating us. Yeah. So we're all, you know, there, there's not much <laughs> difference. Might as well be. Yes. So, but anyway, I love the, the history in our area. I love history and I love to tell stories of his, historical things that are going on. And uh, I, I'm just happy to be part of the historical society and able to help carry on the heritage of Meigs County. And if you have not had the opportunity to go down to Middleport and, and check out their new location, uh, then you, you definitely need to uh, make a trip of that. It's free. There's it's no free, charge. No charge at all. Uh, they will take donations, mm -hmm. uh, but it is free. They have a children's area, and they can help you with research. They can tell you a little bit about, uh, at least get you in the right direction. But there are so many amazing things, and you know, we sometimes think, as I'm sitting here holding this, sometimes you think that there's terrible things that happen, and and you think the future is in question. But those that went before survived, and they carried on, yes, they and did. they made it through. And we've had a pretty rough year around here. It's been a tough year for a lot of people. But you know what? We will endure and we will go forward. We're made of pretty tough stuff. I would say it makes us stronger. Yep, and we're made of pretty tough stuff uh, in Southeast are. Ohio. So again, we will uh, uh, be back again next week with another episode of Wheels and Deals Community Spotlight. And just gonna have, I, you never know what we're gonna have, a little bit of history, a little bit of, history, a, a little yes. bit of entertainment, a little bit of information, but it's all about Meigs Countyans, taking care of Meigs Countyans. And again, totally appreciate being able to do this. We want to thank Wheels and Deals uh, for that. And uh, we'll see you again next week. This week's Community Spotlight is brought to you by Wheels and Deals of Pomeroy and the Meg's Independent Press.